West England and this is my mother's voice. Um, today I'm going to go straight into reading um, one of my monster rhymes. This one's called Invisible and was one of the couple that were actually published. Um, it's one I quite like because it's a bit of fun. So um, here goes. <clears throat> Invisible. The table was set for five at the most. Four for my family and one for the ghost. The trickery started when Dad said grace. A spoonful of soup splashed up in his face. Our mouths were gaping in utter surprise as he wiped the tomato from out of his eyes. A moment later the pepper pot flew into a, the mire of Lancashire stew. Everyone sneezed as the dust hit our noses that this mealtime was definitely becoming atrocious. When Mum's roast potatoes turned into rocks, she very nearly jumped out of her socks. Then the gravy oozed off my plate. I wondered what would be its fate. It oozed like an amoeba onto the floor, where it grew one hundred times or more. It had peas for eyes and carrots for teeth. My sister fainted in disbelief. My mum surprised us, for in a flash, she carved a knife in a swashbuckling slash. The gravy monster paused for an instant of time before splashing to the floor in a puddle of slime. Was it over, we wondered, in silence, or were we destined for something more? I dared not move and hardly breathe, but I could see our mum seized. The dinner she cooked, cooked lay everywhere ruined, even the pot she had made the stew in. She challenged the perpetrator to show his face, and at least to have the very good grace to clear up the mess that it had made and to relay the table as it had been laid. Amazingly, it did as it was told, and then was so exceedingly bold. It lay the table for an extra place, putting a chair in a convenient space. Nervously, we sat for the second time that night, but this time everything went all right. The ghost wouldn't mess with Mum any more, not when it would have to mop the floor. And ever after, when we had a roast, we lay a place for the invisible ghost. 